biggest landlord, the creator of rent-backed mortgage securities, Blackstone, and their Washington State partner in gentrification, Holland Partner Group, together bought and sold over two and a half billion dollars in multifamily real estate in the Portland area just in the last two years. There are over 7,000 residential units alone in URM buildings. And together with all of these commercial buildings, they are the most supremely valuable locations. There is gold in the dirt underneath these cornerstones of our community. And the only way that speculative developers can extract it before this overinflated bubble bursts in a few years is to pull the alarm right now and offer no choice but all or nothing, one or the other. The city's title lien will damage and distress mortgages instantly and has already caused disinvestment by conventional lenders. It will provide opportunistic advantage to private equity and allow them to coerce small business owners, small building owners, into selling their prime pieces of real estate for artificially low cash price prices because they have no leverage and their entire investment has been wiped out by the encumbrance. These are the constructs of hostile takeovers that Wall Street is known for, and we live in a city that lets developers demolish sound, habitable housing without any mandates of affordability. The city's planning to upzone 96% of residential neighborhoods through the residential infill project and every major commercial corridor through the Better Housing by Design proposals, increasing the speculative value even more in all these coveted locations and for certain trophy buildings and incentivizing the wholesale man-made destruction of the fabric of our communities. We're here today to stand with the NAACP in solidarity mm -hmm. and to build a broad, broader coalition of support in demanding that the city leaders stop. Bring those of us who are most significantly and adversely impacted by these policies to the table instead of stacking committees with those who stand to benefit the most financially at our expense. Come together. Thank you. in good faith to promote policies that reinforce the fabric of our communities instead of tearing them apart. We can have it both ways. Solutions built from the bottom up with full transparency and community engagement is how we balance retrofitting our built environment to be safer and more resilient for the future while protecting our citizens in the present from the man-made catastrophe of displacement, the economic violence of corporate gentrification, and the constructs of poverty and inequality. Thank you for listening. Yeah. What do we want? Justice! What do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! What do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! What do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! What do we want it? Now! Hello, my name is Virginia Hankins, and I'm a small business owner on Martin Luther King. And this lien will not only affect me, but it will also affect the business owners, the three small business owners that's in my building, their employees, their families, and community. The lien will cause a financial hardship for my family. I will not qualify for a $100,000 to a $1 million loan. In the past, I've already, already had difficulty getting a loan, and the cost of the loan for the repairs for the upgrades will means that I will be repurchasing my building again multiple times. Safety is important to everyone. We will not fail unless the city fails us. We're asking the city to please stop the process and engage everyone. McLaughlin, Executive Director of Music Portland, the local music industry association. Popular music in Portland is the audible spirit of our city. We're recognized internationally as a center of musical originality, innovation, and authenticity in multiple genres. 
representing the thousand metro area music businesses, venues, and the massive community of full performers and fans. Music Portland opposes the placarding lien applied to URMs, but supports fair and necessary safety upgrades to our local buildings. I'm here to speak about the social costs of this placarding ordinance. Modern life is increasingly isolating. Where do we gather? How do we create a connected community if we live our lives in isolation? Live performance is one of the last institutions that brings us together to expand our social networks and ultimately our civic engagement. Our city boasts more than a thousand live music performances every month, and there's no other activity in the city that connects our people together as frequently or as broadly. Like secular churches or the Grange Halls of Oregon history, music venues are the places that bind our citizens together. People gather with other of, others of similar tastes to create genre communities whom they see repeatedly at different shows and through which they build connections. In Portland, the live music culture is noted for intimate, independent venues spread across the city rather than large arena shows. Each one of these venues is uniquely authentic and decidedly local. Venues provide meaningful experiences for residents, visitors, and new transplants, connecting people in meaningful ways to the cultural heart of Portland. More than three dozen places where live music is performed regularly, including the city-owned Keller, are impacted by this ordinance. These venues presented collectively more than 30% of the total live music activity in the city currently. <laughs> So if you lose one third of our live music activity in the city, that is a death knell. Places like Kelly's Olympian and McMenamin's White Eagle that have become strongholds of the long harassed local hip hop community are threatened. The Moon and Sixpence is the clubhouse for the Irish old time and Cajun music communities. It's threatened. Dante's and the Crystal Ballroom and the Star Theater featuring local and touring bands of every genre is, are threatened. The liquor store and Holocene not only feature the talents of our growing electronic artist community, but also support nonprofits and causes by letting them host events within their spaces. The Laurel Thirst Public House raised funds for more than 500 music fans to purchase a beloved venue to keep it safe from developers within the last year. What better demonstration of the importance of music and community could you ask for? We also include community centers on our list of music performance spaces at risk. The Norris Hall, Ethos, Linton Community Center, Los Prados Event Hall, and re the recently revived Polaris Hall in North Portland are purpose built to encourage social cohesion. Do they need to be made safe? Absolutely. But this ordinance does nothing to improve safety and everything to threaten their continued existence. The local music scene has evolved organically and creates enormous value for this city and its citizens. But for all its vibrancy, the creative economy is fragile. Without places to perform and fewer affordable places to live, the artists will move away. They already are. More musicians are being driven from the city means that many supporting businesses like studios and labels must leave or close. Music venues operate on thin margins, and since most don't own their buildings, they'll suffer this unnecessary placarding policy with higher costs, reduced business, or eviction. In the absence of the city requiring new developments to include cultural and performance spaces, as New York does, there is no realistic chance that these vital organs of our city's cultural body will ever be replaced. It is not hard to imagine a Portland where this rich cultural artistic heritage has been demolished, where character, identity, and soul has been replaced with identical boxes, piping music designed to sell products instead of inspiring communities. It happened in San Francisco, it can happen here. We didn't build these cultural riches so they could be sold back to us at a markup. Yes. The music community demands that City Hall suspend this placarding ordinance and lean and return to the original process that was started to improve public safety while protecting our city identity and lifestyle. Music needs to have a seat at the table too. We need everyone who creates, supports, or loves music to stay attentive to this issue. We can save our city. Yeah. yeah.
Can you believe this coalition? Yes, we can. Music Portland, Portland Tenants Alliance, building owners, the NAACP, we're here together for a reason. My name is Pippa, I'm a housing provider. I own 12 units, I live in one. I also run PAIR, it's a program for homeless young people. This isn't just a placarding ordinance, it's a lien. It's a non-negotiable redlining of our deeds. If it were simply a placarding ordinance, like they say, the city would placard all of their own buildings. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. The schools, their low-income housing. And so there would be, if it were simply a placarding ordinance, there would simply be signs and enforcement. There's not. This, like I said, is structured like a lien. There are implications to this. What it means is that building owners can't get refinancing to do the actual work. Ironic. It also means that these building owners aren't able to sell to anyone but, guess who? Cash buyers. <laughs> oh. This is real. Just two days ago, some colleagues of mine, people that I know, were denied a refi because their building is on the URM list. This is real. That said, I know that they'll, they'll be able to navigate this. They are white and they are well connected. Oh. This ordinance, this lien, will disproportionately affect our brothers and sisters of color who own buildings. This is... This is redlining, not of area, but of structure. I want to remind you, the city already has a seismic code. It's called 2485, and it is good, and it, and it works. It allows current owners to actually do the work with their own funds. But under the guise of fear-based safety concerns, the city has taken the unnecessary step with this redlining lien and is in the process of running our historically locally owned small buildings, our low income housing, our music venues, our small business incubators, our cornerstones of our community out of business. What does this mean? Let's, let's get real here. What does this mean for PEAR, my nonprofit? We have kids. We have homeless young people who have housing vouchers who already right now can't get housing. There is not enough housing. We are in a housing emergency. I need no threat to our current housing stock because not only do people depend on these buildings, but our new nonprofits who inhabit them also depend on these buildings. The very missions of our nonprofits who serve the houseless are at risk if we privilege this harmful lien ordinance over more real and immediate concerns, such as housing and food and shelter. The city is painting a false narrative, saying that this is about public awareness and signage, because it is not. It is structured like a lien. It is a non-negotiable redlining of our deeds it is a transfer of wealth. This is about the, this is about the loss. It is a transfer of wealth. It is about the loss of our local neighbors and neighborhoods to big and out of state developers. Let me tell you a story. How did I find out about all of this? About two years ago, I got a call out of the blue. It was from a friend of someone who was on the URM committee, and they said, Pippa. This URM thing, it's coming down the line. I, and, and you can't do it. Why don't you sell me your building cheap? I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> now I do. I'll remind you, I live in my building. So this is not only my business that this man is threatening, this is my home. The sharks are circling. We demand that the city stop and overturn this ordinance so we can 
Amen. The shark. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're circling. We, de we demand that the city stop and overturn this ordinance so we can simply maintain our buildings, do the seismic work under the current code without threat from the city or developers who see gold under our property. I want to end with a quote by Jane Jacobs. This is not the rebuilding of cities. This is the sacking of cities. I've told you the history, and I allowed my friends to tell you the dynamics. You've heard their stories. We can't let this happen.